what do you think of all these attacks on the pro-life pregnancy centers all over the country? It, it, it's appalling to me. You know, our Department of Justice and the FBI at the federal level needs to do something about it. We said, see them protecting things that are in their agenda or things they like. But when it comes to our side, they don't want to call a terrorist attack. It's unacceptable to me. We need to have equal justice before the law. That's at the Supreme Court. And a lot of people in America, including myself, don't see it. What about people like Senator Elizabeth Warren saying that the pre crisis pregnancy centers are dangerous? Or Maisie Hirano saying that uh, a call to action, talking about how dangerous these pregnancy centers are. I'm calling on those politicians to reduce that awful rhetoric. What's dangerous about saving a baby's life? What's dangerous about helping a mom in crisis you know, to overcome a dark time? The danger is from the rhetoric, the rhetoric of these career politicians who need to keep their mouths shut when it comes to these issues here and bring the tone down. It's because of them that it's not safe in America. It's because of them that our police officers are at risk. So it's time to bring it down. Why do you think the Department of Justice hasn't made any arrests that we know of in all of these vandalisms and arsons and attacks on Catholic churches and pro-life centers after Roe? Yeah, we've clearly seen the Department of Justice has become weaponized. Look what they did to Donald Trump. And they become politicized because exactly what you said, if, if it was a fair and balanced, equal before the law, they'd go after these criminals that are attacking pro-life centers and, and emergency pregnancy centers, but they're not. So that tells me we're in a dark way. We need a serious change. Uh, we've seen a lot of good or bad that governors can do. You know, we've seen the great work of Florida under Governor DeSantis, and we've seen the horrific work of Tom Wolf here. So I'm in this race here to win it on 8 November, but it's up to the people to choose. And because of that decision, if you read the support Supreme Court decision in June that came out about Roe v. Wade, it says in the third paragraph, it's now up to the people and the people's representatives to decide on the issue of, of life and abortion. So Pennsylvania, we're at a crossroads. We have Josh Shapiro, a radical, who wants to kill the babies up until birth, extremely radical. And then you have a defender of life. And so let's choose wisely on 8 November. Why do you think that people like Shapiro and, I mean, Fetterman said that he, he wouldn't name a single abortion restriction. Why won't they? They're so beholden to this radical vision of America by uh, Margaret Sanger. She wanted to use, Sanger wanted to use abortion as eugenics to remove Italians, African Americans, Latinos, anyone who didn't look like her. And uh, that's somebody celebrated by Joe Biden, somebody celebrated in, in uh, you know, and honored by my opponent Shapiro, somebody that Hillary Clinton considered a mentor. I mean, are you kidding me? Somebody, and let me lay it out for you. So my opponent supports abortion as it is right now in Pennsylvania. About 70% of the abortion clinics are in minority neighborhoods. Now, the African-American and the uh, Latino population make up less than 20% of our state population, about 18%. But what's not talked about, this eugenics, it's about half of our abortions, over half of our abortions in Pennsylvania are coming from the, that small part of our population. Uh, under Mass Strand, we're going to defend life because life matters. Well, my last thought here is Hillary Clinton is reputed to have asked um, Mother Teresa why there hasn't been you know, a female president yet in America. And uh, I think uh, Hillary Clinton was ho hoping that Mother Teresa would say, oh, it's going to be you. But no, Mother Teresa, brilliant lady, a lover and defender of life, said you probably aborted her already. Well, thank you so much. This was a really interesting conversation. Appreciate your time.